Howdy, folks. We're back. So good to be here with you today. It is a Saturday morning. Uh, my favorite time to play a video game, um, as you all know. But uh, we are here. We are at the end of Pokemon Yellow. I think we're going to try to beat the game today. Um, and this will really kind of finish the, uh, the first full Let's Play here on the channel. So I'm very, very excited. Um, I know I have people that engage with this after the fact on YouTube. So if you're there, thank you for watching. I really appreciate that. But uh, we're going to get started. So we made it to the Pokemon League in our last stream. Um, we checked out uh, Moltres and Articuno, uh, where they're located. Um, I think we have our bag is looking pretty good. We got some full restores, some hyper potions, some revives. I think that should um, do it for us. We might use that Fire Blast TM. We'll see. Um, but for now, I'm pretty sure... Yeah, we've spent just about all of our money. Here we are, we've got our eight badges. Um, how we doing today? How was everyone's week? Um, let me know how your week was. Mine was all right. I, I think I had a, a pretty calm week for the most part. We kind of had a long day yesterday, but um, I'm pretty happy with how it went overall. Um, so let's do a final team recap before we hop into the Pokemon League. Um, we have our girl, Eve, with that mighty, mighty Thunderbolt. We use the PP up on it to give it 18 power points. We have my girl, my beautiful, beautiful girl, my wife, um, who I love <laughs> at level 42 with Razor Leaf, Mega Drain, Acid, and Sleep Powder. We have the ghost of Cubone's mother, Marowak, Bony the Marowak, at level 42 with Earthquake, Bone Club, Thrash, and Headbutt. Bony might get our Fire Blast TM. Um, we have our boy, Titus, who's finally starting to pull his weight um, here at level 42. Um, with Double Kick, Meditate, Strength, and Rolling Kick. That Rolling Kick could come in handy early on here. We have Keith Angel, the Gyarados, the anchor of our team with Dragon Rage, Surf, Bite, and Ice Beam. Um, and we have got Copter, the Aerodactyl, at level 42 with Wing Attack, Agility, Fly, and Bite. Aerodactyl, really, for the most part, is giving us um, some utility with um, Flying Moves. But who am I going to teach this Fire Blast TM to? Because I want to teach it to somebody. It's going to be Bony, Keith Angel, or Copter. I don't really want to teach it to Keith Angel, because Keith Angel has some of our best moves already. Um, I think I want to teach it to Copter, just just for just for the gigs. Um, yes, but what are we going to get rid of for this? Um, I kind of like having Bite... Um, I kind of like having agility, but Copter's really fast. I'm going to get rid of agility. I don't care. I don't care. We learned Fire Blast, baby. Um, that's awesome. So what we're going to do is we're going to save. And what we're probably going to do is we are going to save right outside the Elite Four. And then we are going to fight all four trainers in a row. And we can we can heal in between, but we can only use our healing items to heal in between. And guys, hold on one second. I'm going to go grab myself a little tissue. Be right back. Whew, okay, we're back. Um, sometimes my nose just starts running. And I gotta have me a little tissue to keep me going. All right, so for those of you that don't know, the, the Elite Four are the final boss trainers of the game. And we're about to step in right now. And if we try to go back, it won't let us. Someone's voice, don't run away. So it won't let us go back. So it's kind of like 
Each room is kind of like its own little gym. Something I love about Generation 1 here is that um, I love the vibes of, of every room. And this here is Lorelei. Welcome to the Pokemon League. I am Lorelei, the Elite Four. No one can best me when it comes to icy Pokemon. Freezing moves are powerful. Your Pokemon will be at my mercy when they are frozen solid. Haha. Are you ready? Awesome. So, Lorelei, uh, the Elite Four members each have, like, not so much a specific typing, but more of a theme. For Lorelei, it's like ice and water is kind of like what she uses. Um, and she opens with this here Dugong, who is a uh, water and ice type. Our girl Eve should do pretty, do a pretty good job of cutting through Dugong with Thunderbolt. Oh, that's a nice critical hit right there. Um, and then Cloyster. Cloyster, again, I think um, Eve is going to be kind of our best bet through this fight. Because Cloyster, again, is a water and ice type, a dual type. I love that Cloyster Sprite, too. Ooh, dang. Oh, okay. Easy. And then we just use Thunderbolt again. Again, this is why we used our power point up on Thunderbolt, because it's just Jolteon's best move and the one we're going to be pounding. Um, Slowbro. Here, um, again, it's probably going to be Jolteon, just because Slowbro is a water and psychic type, so that psychic type could really hurt my wife if we try to bring my wife in on this and withdraw that's just going to raise his regular defense so that's not really going to be effective against my thunderbolt so jolteon is really cutting through lorelei so far which i'm pretty happy about like we have not taken a hit um jinx here is our first ice and psychic type so for this what are we gonna do you know what i think we're gonna go into copter and use our it's an insane cry. Um, we're going to use our newly acquired Fire Blast here. This probably won't do that much damage. Fire Blast is a very powerful attack, but on an Aerodactyl, it might not have been the best play. <laughs> and Jinx is a really good Pokemon, so that kind of smoked us a little bit. Um, we don't have a great matchup for Jinx, because although... Hitmonlee's fighting moves are going to be... Oh, okay. Interesting choice by her. Okay, that's... We like to see that. Great critical hit there. Because now she's locked into Thrash, and that doesn't do too much damage to Keith Angel. Um, but I was saying, while Hitmonlee's fighting moves are good against Ice, um, Jinx's secondary psychic type would really mess him up. But here for Lapras, we're going to see what Titus can do. Um... Because Titus is a uh, Lapras is another water and ice type. Nice, we're faster, so hopefully we can get some flinches here. Ooh, Blizzard. Blizzard is the strongest ice type move in the game, but as you can see, it's a little bit inaccurate. Um, what we don't want to see is paralysis here, and we got it. So that means if it uses Body Slam again, it will knock out Titus. So we're gonna go ahead and swap into Jolteon. Jolteon should be able to get a. Oh boy the strongest water move in the game. Jolteon should eat this, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. All right, so from here, I predict Jolteon to be faster. Thunderbolt should knock out Lapras, and that'll be victory number one in the Elite Four. Love to see it. And if you haven't noticed, we are pretty significantly underleveled. Um, Lapras is Lorelei's ace Pokemon, and a really cool one. And it's at level 56. Eve is our highest level at level 43. How dare you, she says. You're better than I thought. Go on ahead. You only got a taste of Pokemon League power. Um, so now we're going to go on to our next challenger. Um, but first, we're going to heal up the squad. Oh, yes, I forgot I sent in Copter to, to his untimely demise. All right, here, we're just going to speed through a little bit of this. Oopsie. There we go. Hyper Potion heals 200 hit points. Um, there we go. And then we'll just use this on Keith Angel. Yeah. Okay, great. Sitting pretty. Now, I'm not going to save between each Elite Four member. 
because I want to see how we do against the whole thing. And if we really run into a brick wall, we might need to go back and train a little bit. So that way I can just turn off the... Uh, I can just reset and then we'll start from the beginning. And this is something they don't really do in later games. They give each uh, Elite Four member's room like their own music. Um, they do give each Elite Four member like their own room design, but in this game specifically, they each have like their own really distinct feel. Um, and this is Bruno. I am Bruno of the Elite Four. Through rigorous, rigorous training, people and Pokemon can become stronger. I have weight trained with my Pokemon. Whoa. Ash, we will grind you down with our superior power. Hoo-ha! So Bruno is like a big, burly fighter guy, and he specializes in fighting Pokemon, but he also has some kind of, like, tough Pokemon. So that's kind of like his theme. And a really nice full circle moment with Bruno here is... Oh, that's a terrible miss. But Slam is not a very good move. So we're going to knock this out with my wife real quick. Like, um, something with Onyx. It's a really good full circle moment because Brock, the first boss trainer of the game, has an Onyx. And Bruno, one of the last boss trainers of the game, has two Onyx, which is really cool. But the funny thing is um, Onyx actually isn't a very good Pokemon by this point in the game. Um, so it really just kind of shows you the how far you've come, which I think is really cool. Um, da -da -bop. Ah, Thunder Punch. Hitmonchan can use all of the elemental punches. So it's got Thunder Punch, Fire Punch, and Ice Punch, which is really cool. The only problem with Hitmonchan is that its special isn't very high. So it can't really use those punches very effectively. Like, that wasn't very effective, but it did very little damage. Um, and Copter here is going to be a great matchup using those flying type moves against Bruno's fighting types. Ah. Uh, we're fighting a Titus of our own. That sprite, again, is so sick just that. Like, it's such a sick action shot. Um, and ah, uh, excruciating. This will hurt. This'll hurt. This'll hurt. Okay, good. Um, if he had missed with high jump kick, um, that would have done damage to Hitmonlee, and then it probably would have knocked itself out. So for Onyx here, we're going to go back to my wife. And one Mega Drain ought to heal us up to full and knock out the Onyx, because again, just one touch of a grass or water move will kill this thing. Um... And again, just another great piece of game design. And like, you can say what you want about the original Pokemon games, how they're kind of like buggy and not very good in that way. But I think a lot of their, at least in Generation 1, a lot of the de design philosophies are just super duper solid. Um, and there's Machamp. We've seen a lot of Machokes. Um, throughout our run, but this is the first Machamp you see, which makes it kind of special for these boss fights. Ooh, X-Defend, good play, Bruno. Um, Copter's probably not going to be able to make it through Machamp here. Oh, he's using another X-Defend. He's really stacking up the defense. Um, let's just try a Wing Attack. Okay, that didn't do a lot. Alright, this will knock out Copter, but that's okay. Copter had some good knockouts. And Keith Angel should be able to clean up pretty well. Because he was stacking up his regular defense, but Keith Angel should be able to attack his low special. Alright, so one more surf. Easy. Easy peasy. One more surf ought to do it. Boom. Goodbye, Machamp. Um, but yeah, this is the first Machamp you see in the game, really. And one of the reasons it's a rare Pokemon is because... My job is done. Go face your next challenge. Can't even, can't even say much. He's speechless. Um, but one of the reasons that Machamp is such a rare Pokemon is because you have to trade your Machoke for it to evolve. 
And there are a few other Pokemon like Al like that. Alakazam is one which we saw, which we have seen with Sabrina. And another is um, Golem, which you don't really see in the in a run of Pokemon Yellow. I don't think there are any trainers with Golem, which is kind of crazy. Um, so here we're actually going to start with Bony because we have. This here is Agatha. She is a cranky old lady, and she uses ghost and poison type Pokemon. Kind of like creepy Pokemon is like her theme, um, which is really cool. There's only one ghost evolution line in the game, though. So she has some kind of duplicate Pokemon on her team. But what's cool, she has two Gengar. But what's cool, Oak's taken a lot of interest in you, child. That old Duff was once tough and handsome. That was decades ago. Now he just wants to fiddle with his Pokedex. He's wrong. Pokemon are for fighting. Ash, I'll show you how a real trainer fights. Um, anyway, that's a whole other thing. Her and Professor Oak have like a secret romantic past that isn't really expanded upon, but it's alluded to. It's really cool. Um, and I was saying her two Gengar are very cool because while she has two of the same Pokemon, the way that they are built... Oh, that sprite. That sprite is incredible. The way that they are built are very different. Um, like one, like this just use Substitute. Um, one is much more defensive. We'll kind of try to use like Confuse Ray and stuff like that. Um, and the other one is a bit more offensive, at least I'm pretty sure. Hate to see the paralysis. You hate to see it. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, no. This one has Mega Drain. Oh, my gosh. Oh, this is terrible. Um, we're going to go into Keith Angel. Ugh. Agatha can be very tough this way. Um, because... You never really know what she's going to do, because... Okay, good. I was really hoping it would break the first time. Because she can just get really tricky, like using that lick to paralyze you, using the substitute behind to hide behind a wall like that. Confuse Ray can make you hit yourself, uh, which we really don't want to see like that. Um, so things aren't going swimmingly so far, gang. What we're gonna do is use a full restore on Boney. Um, because we really want to use Boney later, and we don't want to be paralyzed. Oh, and the confusion. Okay, great. Um, I'm gonna try Ice Beam. Okay. Oh, boy. Mmm. Okay. We're actually going to swap into my wife in case he tries to use Mega Drain. Oh, a Super Potion. Dang, Erica. Erica. Agatha, you are making the plays. This is probably one of the toughest fights we've had in the run. That's a really good switch. Because my race, that was a critical hit and that did nothing to her freaking uh, Golbat. So now we're going to be making some switches of our own. Wing attack, a good switch in on Jolteon. Not going to do a lot of damage. Let's get that Thunderbolt off. Mmm. Would have loved to see that one shot, but I'll love to see that Super Potion, because that kind of guarantees the win, because that wasted her turn. Okay. Um... As a kid, the uh, the Agatha fight was definitely one of the toughest ones. We're going to go into Aerodactyl here. And we're going to use Fly. And it's very interesting. It's awesome that I'm faster than this Gengar. Um, substitute broke. Don't use Mega Drain. Okay, I'll take a Super Potion. That's fine. Um... Something interesting about Fly. The whole concept of Fly is that it flies up in the air. Oh wow, she has so many super potions here. 
Um, and then on the second turn, it hits the Pokemon. But like a regular normal type move won't hit um, a ghost type, but if it's labeled a flying type move, it will. So that's something that doesn't really make a lot of logical sense, but we'll, we'll, we'll roll with it. Um, okay, here is Haunter. So this is the middle stage evolution of Gengar, which another just excellent sprite here, man. Um, okay, great. Dreamator cannot hit unless you are asleep. I'm really thinking one Earthquake should do the job on Haunter. And which is why I opened with Boney against the Gengar. See, there we go. That's great. That looks wonderful. Um, Arbok is another pure poison type. We've seen Arbok before. Jesse and James run, run Arbok. Um, and Earthquake should definitely do the job. This is Earthquake's one of the best moves in the game. Plain and simple. But... Would have loved to see the one shot there, but we can finish it off with a Bone Club. Love it. Good work, Boney. Now, I don't really remember what her last Gengar has. We're going to stick in with Boney. My guess is that it has Hypnosis and Dream Eater. Okay. So this is probably really what she's going to want to do. Um, so I'm just going to use that Poke Flute, and hopefully we don't soft lock again. Okay. Um, awesome. Yeah, Hypnosis isn't isn't uh, very accurate. Um, it's very powerful to be able to put your opponent's sleep, but it's not very accurate. And I, yeah, it looks like she, awesome, great. So got some really clutch misses there. Awesome. Yeah, that was one of our tougher fights of the run. I mean, just a lot of interesting plays going on. That first Gengar really trolled us for a while. Um, you win, I see what the old Duff sees in you now. I have nothing else to say. Run along now, child. Um, all right, so with that, we are on to the last fight um, of the Elite Four. And we are getting very close to beating the game, which is extremely exciting. This is kind of taking a little less time um, than it could, uh, because again, our team, our team is really good. Our team is really, really powerful. Um, and again, we're not gonna save what does he start with? I believe he starts with Gyarados. Let's do it. And I'm not touching it. It just kind of automatically makes you walk down that corridor, which is super sick. Um, and here we have Lance, um, the final Elite Four member. Um, he uses Dragon-type Pokemon. Ah, I heard about you, Ash. I lead the Elite Four. You can call me Lance the Dragon Trainer. You know that dragons are mythical Pokemon. Uh, they're hard to catch and raise, but their powers are superior. They're virtually indestructible. Well, are you ready to lose? Your league challenge ends with me, Ash. And what's awesome is the other Elite Four members get the regular battle music, but Lance gets my favorite track. Yes! Sorry, that was probably loud. But I love that music. Um, and that's the last time we'll hear it in the run, so... But one thing we know, having a Gyarados of our own, is that an Electric-type move will just smoke it. Because it's double weak to Electric-type moves. And I really talked about the concept of boss types earlier in our run. And we just experienced it with Agatha. She has ghost types, um, which have very unique um, weaknesses. Dragonair. And this is where we're really going to experience it. Something that I might do... Yeah, I'm going to go into Titus here. Yeah, I'm going to go into Titus here. Because I want to save Keith Angel for his last Pokemon, if I can. 
Um, in this game, dragon Pokemon. Ooh, nice, I'm faster. Maybe I can get some flinches. Ooh, Thunderbolt, very powerful. It's not, uh, won't have the same type attack bonus, but dang. Let's get the flinch. If we get the flinch, we can beat this Dragonair. Dang it. Um, but Dragon-type Pokemon are only weak to Ice-type moves. And, again, I'm really... I'm harping the game design aspect of this. I don't know if this Dragonair knows a Fire-type move. Wow, Dragonair's not very fast, huh? Um, okay, one more ass... Oh, boy. Let's try to put it to sleep. Um, so this could probably stay asleep for a while. We'll try a Razor Leaf. Okay, the critical hit still isn't great. Um, so I think I'm just gonna use Sleep Powder to let my wife kind of whittle down the Dragonair a lot. Um, oh, good, Defense Fell, that's good to know. Help us do this faster. Oh, it looks like it's a speed tie a little bit. Um, but yeah, Dragons are only weak to... Ice type and technically other dragon moves, but there really aren't any actual dragon moves in the game. It's kind of weird. The only dragon type move is Dragon Rage, and it does like a set amount of HP, so it doesn't really count. Um, another Dragonair. I think this one, because I think one of them knows Thunderbolt and one of them knows Flamethrower, which is probably the situation we're in here. I am going to go into Bony for this because Boney can probably hit the hardest with Earthquake. And just another piece of game design. This dragon type. Ooh, it knows Bubble Beam. This is gonna hurt. Hopefully it doesn't kill. I didn't know that. Okay, cool. Um, you don't encounter dragon types throughout your run. So if you knew nothing about this game, and you just, yeah, we're just gonna let Boney... Uh, get knocked out here so we can get a clean switch in. Because Boney's not going to be super helpful in the rest of this here battle. Neither is Wife, so we'll see if we can do what we did last time. Uh, put it to sleep. Oh, no, that's why it brought... Okay, that was a clutch hit. So what I'm going to try to do is use Mega Drain to gain back a little bit of HP. I don't know if that's going to be worth it. But what I was saying is, if you had never encountered the dragon type throughout the game, which you won't, really, um, and you knew nothing about this game, you knew nothing about, like, type advantages or anything like that, um, you would be, like, awesome. Love that we outspeed. So if this hits, we should be fine. This should knock it out because we lowered defense. Awesome. Yeah, we're just, this is this is a tough one, kids. We are, uh... We only have three Pokemon left against his two. But luckily, I tried to save some of our better matchups. He has an Aerodactyl of his own. Level 60! Yes, if you knew nothing about this game, you would have no idea what this... Hyper Beam. Very, very, very powerful normal-type move. Way to hold on, Jolteon! That was awesome! Because the thing about Hyper Beam is that it's really strong, but after you use it, you have to recharge. So that really gives us an opening for Jolteon to come in for the kill here, uh, which I love. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna keep in Jolteon Dragonite. This is what Dragonair evolves into. Awesome. Okay, great. So this Dragonite should knock us out, but we were able to paralyze it. So that means it's not going to be able to outspeed anything. Blizzard's a crazy strong move. Um, so now, this is why we taught Keith Angel Ice Beam. Dragonite is a dragon flying type, which means it's double weak to ice moves. Um, but dragons are strong against every... Oh, if that hit, that would have killed Keith Angel easily. Oh, boy. Um, but yeah, dragons are strong against every other elemental type. 
So if you had no idea what it was weak against, you'd be like, what is this thing weak against? It's only weak against like a kind of rare type in the ice type, which again, is good game design. Really cool. Really good battle, really challenging battle. Yeah, we're under level guys. Like Jolteon hanging on from that hyper beam was super clutch. Um, I still can't believe my dragons lost to you, Ash. You are now the Pokemon League champion. Or you would have been. What? But you have one more challenge ahead? You have to face another trainer. His name is... What's his name? Gary. He beat the Elite Four before you! Oh, he is the real Pokemon League champion. Dang. So we have one more fight against that old son of a gun. Um, I mean, obviously I knew that was going to happen. But um, that's a really, it's a really cool twist. It's just like, it's a common trope now. And like every other Pokemon game after this has like had a champion that you have to fight after the Elite Four. But in this context for the first game, it's just like, okay, cool. I'm going to fight the Elite Four. And then when I beat them, I'm going to be the champion. Um, but you never realize that that could happen. It's really cool. Um, so what we're going to do here, yes, we have an ether. I'm going to go ahead and give one of those ethers on Thunderbolt just to be safe. Um, I'll, pro I'll go ahead and use the other one too on Earthquake. Because we're probably not going to need those if we can uh, beat our rival here. And what will happen... You know what I think I'm going to do? I was saying that I'm not going to save, but I'm going to save my game. I think we're going to be able to do this. And if we lose, I'll just reset right here. We should be able to do this. So... Our rival is going to start with his Sand Slash, I believe. Um, so now we're gonna get a get a taste of our rival's best team um, to finish this out. Let's see if we can do it. Oh, and this battle theme is incredible, by the way. Gary, hey, I was looking forward to see you, Ash. My rival should be strong to keep me sharp. While working on the Pokedex, I looked all over for powerful Pokemon. Not only that, I assembled teams that would beat any Pokemon type. And now, I'm the Pokemon League Champion. Ash, do you know what that means? I'll tell you. I am the most powerful trainer in the world. Get ready for epic music. Very, very cool music. Um, it's still not quite on par with the gym leader music in my heart, but it's still very awesome. Um, another great thing about Gyarados is that if Sand Slash has a ground move, it's not going to be able to affect me because I am part flying. Ooh, wow, that did a lot of damage. Fury Swipes shouldn't be too, shouldn't be too much of an issue here. Right, let's use this Ice Beam to finish you off. One down. And again, um, this team that your rival has in this game is very kind of like Pokemon Yellow specific. Um, what do we want to use here? I think I want to use Copter. Alakazam. Alakazam is probably the best Pokemon in the game. Um, Alakazam and Gengar. Hopefully it's not going to just annihilate us in one shot. Oh, it did not, but it could have. Uh, this will probably do roughly half. Okay. Um, yeah. We don't have a great matchup for Alakazam, but I do have a little ace in the hole here. Pin Missile is one of the only bug-type moves in this game that does damage. So let's see what Jolteon can do. Okay, I'm glad it used Psy Beam instead of Psy Kick. Psybeam is weaker than Psychic. Still does half. Oh, and it missed! Oh, no! <laughs> oh, 
Oh, that's bad. That's bad. Um. Ooh. We we are in a we're in a tough spot here, gang. Um, I'm gonna try again. Okay, use recover. Okay, yeah, it's super. It's not gonna do that much because um, Jolteon's not a bug type. Don't kill me! Don't kill me! Don't kill me! Um, boys and girls, we might be looking at a reset. Um, I think this will be our first loss. Oh, my special fell. That's terrible. Um, or I'm gonna have to really use some of my potions here. Um, dang. Because here's the thing. Bony's special is terrible. Wife is weak against Psychic, and Ty Titus is weak against Psychic. Um... An earthquake should be able to break through, but I gotta be able to hold on. Okay. It went for recover. Um. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna get creative with our potions here. And again, this is why I wanted to go in a little bit. Oh, okay, I love this. It lowered my accuracy. Dang it. Dang it. Really lucky play by Alakazam. Um, I wanted to go in under level because I wanted it to be a challenge, and that one shot's bony. That's terrible. Um, all right. We'll see if my wife can put him to sleep. Okay, that lowers our accuracy, but I'll take that. That's great. Um, oh, and it wakes up first turn. You're kidding me. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um... Okay, Alakazam is down, but we are in a dogfight, kids. Um, okay, Executor. I don't know if, if Executor has any psychic moves on it. Um, okay, and this will be... Yeah, that's super effective. But still not doing a ton. Okay. I think we are... We're still, we're still doing all right. We're still doing okay. We're not dead yet. Um, but what I was gonna say is that some of these Pokemon are still pretty iconic to um, our rival. Um, but his Pokemon Yellow team is very unique. It's not really what is considered like his canonical team. Dang it, those. Accuracy drops are killing us right now. Um, I love that we're in this great fight right now. Okay. Again, I can do this all day. The Poke Flute plays no matter what. Okay. We're kind of in another battle here. How many times in a row is that? Five or six now? Six. Let's call that six. Um, seven. I think our record's ten. Okay, good. Um, so I'm gonna swap into Titus here. And I'm gonna take this opportunity to revive somebody. And I know we're gonna need Boney later, so I'm gonna revive Boney. Boney's gonna be one of our big ones. And I'll also take this opportunity to revive Keith Angel. Um, I don't know if we're going to really need Titus. Um, this is kind of like Titus' last stand here. Um, Copter could be very useful against this Executor. Maybe I'll just bring in Copter. Okay, the great thing about this Executor is even though it's part Psychic, it doesn't have any Psychic moves. At least I don't think. Or it would have definitely used one by now. Um, ugh, Leech Seed. Okay. So Leech Seed, if you don't recall, um, drains HP from us every turn and gives HP back to the opponent. But if you switch out, it gets rid of it. So that was the play there with Copter. Awesome critical hit. Um, 
All right, now I think we're gonna get back in our hypnosis dance with Executor here. Okay. <laughs> Apologies for the speed up, but I think that's just gonna be how it's gonna be. That's three in a row. Okay. Um, and even though, like, Acid isn't a very strong move, but it is still super effective, so it's still doing decent damage here. And the Executor goes down, and we got some of our team back. Let's go. That's why we bought all those revives. And again, as you saw, the thing with revives is it's like, it's very powerful to be able to heal your Pokemon back from being, uh, heal your Pokemon after being knocked out. So kind of like the check for that to make it not as powerful is to make it so it only heals half. Ooh, being slower than the Cloyster. That's tough. Don't kill us, please. Okay. I would have used Mega Drain had I known that. But our wife has given a valiant effort so far. That was even a critical hit. Um, wife, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this opportunity to Hyper Potion Boney. And we're going to let my beautiful, powerful, strong wife make a sacrifice for the squad. Good job, baby. Good job. Um, okay. So here. What is going to be our play? We don't have a ton of great options. Hopefully Hitmonlee can be faster. It is. This is super effective. Great. Nice shot. Nice crit. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Two Pokemon left. Nine tails. Um, oh, it's so funny because your rival is so famous for having an Arcanine. <laughs> um, but in this game, for the sake of doing something different, they gave him a nine tails, which is funny and interesting. Um, really, the only Pokemon in this battle that are considered like his Pokemon, like Blue's Pokemon, are Executor, Gyarados, and... Oh, he doesn't even have Gyarados in this fight. Um, Executor and Ninetales. No! <laughs> Executor and Alakazam. That's it. Quick attack, that's not gonna do nothing to Keith Angel. Nothing. Um, oh, guys, I'm loving the tough champion fight. Oh, love it! Um, all right. But last but not least, his Jolteon. And what were we doing? We were saving Boney this whole time. This Jolteon can't do anything to Boney. Prepare to lose. Loser. Ugh. Loser, I guess. Oh, uh, but that is a critical hit. That's not great. Okay, great. <laughs> Because really, Jolteon's entire utility is using those powerful Electric-type moves, but they straight up do not affect my Marowak at all. Quick attack, not gonna do it, my man, even with a critical hit. Adios, sir. Mm. Guys, things got really hairy against that Alakazam, but we have defeated the game. That is the last boss fight of Pokemon Yellow. No, that can't be! You beat my best after all that work to become League Champ. My reign is over already. It's not fair! Ugh. Why? Why did I lose? I never made any mistakes raising my Pokemon. Maybe it's because you're a jerk. Darn it, you're the new Pokemon League Champion. Although I don't like to admit it. Hmm. In comes Professor Oak. Oh, so you won. Congratulations. You're the new Pokemon League champion. You've grown up so much since you first left with Pikachu. Ash, you have come of age. Gary, I'm disappointed. <laughs> Screw you, Gary! Um, I came when I heard you beat the Elite Four. But when I got here, you had already lost. Gary, do you understand why you lost? You have forgotten to treat your Pokemon with trust and love. It's true. It's true. Without them, you will never become a champ again. Ash, you understand that your victory was not just your own doing. The bond you share with your Pokemon is marvelous. Ash, come with me. That is something that they kind of really hit on in 
the Pokemon franchise is that they're really just like, no, Pokemon love to like be with trainers and be caught and they love to battle. Um, they're friends. They really hit like the friendship um, aspect. We're going into the Hall of Fame. Um, you have endeavored hard to become the new league champion. Um, they really hit like the friendship aspect because they really want it to make it so that it's not like like animal fighting. <laughs> Keith Angel, Hall of Fame. Uh, best Pokemon on our team this whole run. Bony, Hall of Fame, got the last kill. Uh. My beloved. My beloved made the sacrifice that made our victory possible. Had some great gym leader moments too. Titus, the Hitmonlee, not the best team member. <laughs> But uh, had that great crit against Cloyster. That was super clutch. Eve. Maybe probably one of the more useful Pokemon on our team with that Thunderbolt. Copter, the Aerodactyl. Just so sick. Look at that sprite. Love these sprites. I don't know if I've said that. I have. And then Ash. Only own 25, which isn't very good. <laughs> you still need more Pokemon. Try to catch other species. Um... But yeah, so then, credit roll. Um, and uh, uh, Satoshi Tajiri. Um, so yeah, here we have the credits. Um, I'll kind of speed through them a little bit. Not too much, because I still want to honor the people that made these games. Ken Sugimori is like a father of the of the of the franchise. I mean, Satoshi Tajiri, like, the Ash character in... Well, I'm really leaning back here. <laughs> the Ash character in Japan is named Satoshi because it was really his idea. Like, uh, Tajiri, Masuda, Sugimori, those are kind of like some of the famous kind of like founders, uh, fathers of the franchise, really. Um, Gail Tilden. Good job, Gail. I don't know if I have ever really remembered your name. Um, but, uh, kind of speed through these just a little bit. Ba-da-ba! Awesome. The end. Um, I don't remember if you have to... Okay, good. Um, so now then the game kind of like naturally restarts here. Um, we got back to our title screen. Wow, we haven't seen our title screen in a while, because I just start us back up. Um, so, so far, we're about, we got about like 10-ish minutes or so. So, for our last Pokemon Yellow stream, we might go a little bit long. In this game, we've beaten the game, but there is one more thing we can do. I don't know if we need to talk to Professor Oak. I don't think so, but I'm going to. Um, good to see you. How's your Pokedex? Yeah, he just checks your Pokedex when you talk to him. And again, we haven't caught that many Pokemon, so our Pokedex rating is not very good. Which is fine. Um, if you want to try to catch all the Pokemon, more power to you. Um, that's one of the things you can do. Oh, yeah. We're still really hurting from our league match. So where we're going to go is Cerulean City. Well, Trent, what's in Cerulean City? <laughs> well, we're going to find out, gang. Um, I don't think we need any other HMs that we don't have. We might just need... I know we need Surf, I th think. If you'll notice, if you look at that little cave, uh, when we first came here, someone was blocking that cave entrance, but no one's blocking it now. What is this? What is this mystery cave? Um, what could be in it? And that is really the last piece of the Generation 1 puzzle, is checking out the Cerulean Cave. Um, uh, we need Keith Angel. Ba -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. So we can go down here. So let's see what's in here. It's in just like a seemingly... Oh, oh that's not what I wanted. It's in like a seemingly random little spot. Ooh. Creepy. 
Um, so this is Cerulean Cave. There are a lot of powerful Pokemon in here. Um, I don't know... A lot of times I don't really know where we need to go. Um, but we're going to try to get through here like kind of quick. This, Yeah, this just leads to an item. Max Elixir. Yeah, there's a lot of very strong items in here. Um, oh, and I was talking about revives earlier. We actually had a couple max revives in our back pocket. You only get like a couple of those in the game because they're super strong. Um, they can, uh, heal a knocked out Pokemon back to full, um, which is very strong. So as we go through here, there's a very powerful Pokemon in here. Definitely the most powerful wild Pokemon you're going to encounter in the game. Um, our repels aren't really doing anything because, um... The Pokemon are a stronger level than we are. But I have our girl Jolteon up in front because Jolteon's really um, fast and can run from pretty much anything. And we're not really worried about these items in here right now as much because we, you know, we'll grab it if it's there. Because we are trying to get to something at the end of this cave. But what is it? Um, if you don't know... Ooh, here's an item. Love it. Ah, another rare candy. Love it. Um, I'll still use a repel, because there might be some, like, lower-level Pokémon that we're not running into as a result. Because you really just kind of... It's like a maze where you go, like, back and forth through a few of these levels. Having Weeping Bell here is a little random. I guess we did catch our, our girl Bellsprout right on the route near here. So I guess that makes a little bit of sense. Yeah, so it just kind of has you going back and forth through this kind of, like, labyrinth area. Um, ooh. Okay, I'll just run. And it's not too terribly difficult to get through. All things considered, Cerulean Cave is pretty linear. And we're skipping some of these items, but I want to get to the main event here. Because, again, this really is the last thing you do in Pokemon Yellow. This is really, like, the only post-game that there is. Um, and I want to show it off for you on our last stream here. Another Max Revive. Again, very powerful item. And it's like, if for the post-game you can go back and fight some trainers, you can try to catch all the Pokemon, um, you can fight the Elite Four again if you want to. Um, so there's, there's still some things to do if you really want to keep playing. Um, but usually for me, once we defeat the last battle, that's when I consider the run to be complete. For me. But some people like to be, like, real completionists and just um, do absolutely everything that the game has to offer. Ooh, ditto. I don't know. Have we encountered a ditto? I'm just going to... So what Ditto does, all it does is transform. And it can transform into the Pokemon you are, that you are. That's all Ditto does. Um, it's a really weird, like, gimmick Pokemon, but it's, it's pretty cool. Um, and another piece of lore about Ditto, I'll, I'll explain it in a minute um, when we get to what we're trying to get to here in Cerulean Cave. Ooh, another rare candy, excellent. Um, is there an item over here? A hidden one, maybe? Nope. Just a dead end. So many gold bats in here. All right. Yeah, because again, this dungeon isn't like super difficult. You can get a little bit lost, especially if you're trying to get every item, but it's not really trying to get you like truly turned around. Um, for the most part, it's, it's pretty linear. It's a pretty linear walk to your destiny. Um, sorry, we're running into all these wild Pokemon. Our Pokemon are a bit underleveled. Our repels don't work. Oh my goodness, gang. Okay. <laughs> so many Golbats. Okay, I'm not even going to bother popping another repel. Max Elixir, another just wicked strong item. 
And here's another ditto, again. Um, once we get to the end here, I am... Ooh, Chansey! Um, Chansey is a very rare Pokemon. I'm just gonna see if I can catch it real quick. I didn't really even realize Chansey was here. Um, a light screen raises its... Um, will Titus kill it? At least strength. Okay. How many Ultra Balls do I have? I have three. Let's see if I can catch it. Nope. Do, 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 do. Okay. Um, quick attack. Sorry, we're off on a little tangent here because I want to see if I can catch this Chansey. Uh, yeah, Chansey is one of the more rare. Nice! One of the more rare Pokemon in the game. I think you can see it in the Safari Zone, but it's just so likely to run away. Um, Chansey isn't particularly good. Really high special defense. Very low regular defense is kind of its deal. Really high um, HP as well. Um, and it's also known as like the healer Pokemon. It's a Pokemon that you will see in the Pokemon Centers next to Nurse Joy. Um, okay, the wild Pokemon are going just crazy. Sorry, guys. I'm just kind of... Ooh, Rhydon. A wild Rhydon. That's so powerful. Yeah, because, like, our rival, the champion, their highest level Pokemon was level 65. Um, what am I doing? And that wild Rhydon was level 62. Interesting, we got two items next to each other here. I don't remember this. Just an Ultra Ball and a Max Revive. Another really powerful little tandem. Da -da -da -da. I think we should be close. Yeah, because I don't remember exactly where it is in here at the end of the cave. Uh, we're going to grab that item because it's bothering me that we're skipping it. It bothered me that we skipped those first couple also. <laughs> um, ugh, lick a tongue. What are you doing here? Um... So as we make our way, ooh, there it is. Um, so at the very end of this game, you can catch Mewtwo. Which, if you recall, there in the Pokemon Mansion, we learned a little bit about Mewtwo. About he was cloned from the mythical Pokemon Mew. And he became enraged and escaped his scientific prison. Um... And this is where he escaped to, um, which is super cool. Another piece of, like, unofficial lore is that Ditto, which we've seen in the cave, are maybe, they've never confirmed this, like, failed clones of Mew. And Mew is the only other Pokemon that can use the move Transform, which is Ditto's only move, which kind of, like, lends credence to that theory. Um, that's kind of one of my favorite unofficial Pokemon theories. It's not, like, an official thing, but... Um, with this, this is actually why we were saving our Master Ball here. A Master Ball can catch any Pokemon without fail, no matter what. So that's, I was saving it for Mewtwo. So, folks, thank you um, for watching this Let's Play of Pokemon Yellow. I'm so happy to show this game off um, and just kind of talk about why I love it. And we'll catch Mewtwo. And we'll see what the deal is. Whoa! <sighs> Powerful. Mewtwo is awesome. Mewtwo is like the antagonist of the first Pokemon movie, which is sick. Kind of telling more of that story about he like escaped the lab he was created in and stuff like that. A, a lot of like cool themes of like existence. <laughs> um, pretty surprisingly deep. Um, Mewtwo is one of the strongest Pokemon ever created. It is a pure psychic type. Um, and... We got him. Um, its DNA is almost the same as Mew's. However, its size and disposition are vastly different. Because Mew is very is considered very, like, docile and just kind of, like, playful. And it's kind of like a cute little small... Um, cute little small guy. Um, so, folks... 
I can't say this enough. Thank you for watching this. Thank you for tuning in. Um, thank you for going on this Pokemon Yellow journey with me. I have really, really enjoyed um, my first little foray into Twitch and YouTube and, and streaming. I love video games. I love talking about video games. And um, I'm not entirely sure what we're going to do next. I might dive into more Pokemon. It's probably my favorite franchise. Um, we could get into my all-time favorite game um, next. Uh, we could do a little bit of a curveball. Um, I'm thinking about it. Um, we'll see. We'll probably find out like uh, tomorrow, maybe, or maybe this week. Uh, definitely this upcoming week we'll uh, start streaming a new game and uh, we'll just keep the keep the good times rolling. Again, if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you for watching it after the fact. Um, I've already, you know, kind of connected with a few people on there and it's just been so nice uh, talking to other people who love this stuff like I do. But with that, thank you and I will see you all next time. Peace, gang.